Hi, this is Kim with www.embody-light.com and I'm back with another video, Manifestation Part 2. So before we get started, if you have not subscribed, please do so and please hit the like button. Any questions, please leave in the comments section. I My website is www.embody-light.com and I do psychic readings, energy healing, um, a lot of different things. Just check out my uh, website. I am also a hypnotherapist and that's one of the tools I use in energy healing. So back to the subject of this video. So in part one, we talked about the first steps in manifestation, how you identify your goal and, and start working towards it, doing things in the physical realm. And one of the things I suggested for people to do on that video is to before you go to sleep at night ask what is it that's preventing me from being the best version of myself that I can be um, or you know that's preventing me from manifesting what I'm what I'm wanting and when you're using languages language around creating your reality don't do what I just did and say want because want is a word implying lack, like you can't uh, achieve that goal, almost. So, so if you did that and asked what was preventing, first of all, I did it, and I did not have a very good day the next day because I had so much coming at me that I didn't realize was still unresolved. There's just a situation with some family members that's been challenging to deal with and that's mainly my thing um so anyways so that first day wasn't good and but once i worked on it i felt a lot better but so what are some of the things that came up to you some of the possible things that can come come th cause the issue can be procrastination I can't tell you how many times I've done a reading for somebody and they're asking, well, why hasn't this happened? Or, you know, I'm anticipating this is going to happen, but it's slowed up. What's going on? Well, a lot of times it's because of things in the physical world that we're procrastinating on. Um, like one person I was working with, the answer was do your taxes. It's because that person, not that spirit encourages you to pay taxes, but that person had was procrastinating and fear-based and it wasn't going to be as bad as she thought. She wasn't going to have to pay him what she thought she might have to. So because she was procrastinating and putting fear in there, that shut her energy field down. Um, and then another thing that could have come up was, are you in judgment about a person or a thing? Because when we judge, we cut ourselves off from flow. Are you in separation consciousness, which is where you see yourself as being either better than or inferior to other people? Because if you think that way, that's not a oneness consciousness. Um, you would recognize maybe that somebody who you consider to be inferior maybe just had not gone through their process and still had a lot of unresolved emotions and that kind of thing that they project at you. So another thing that can um, affect it is if you go into overwhelm, when you've just got so much going on that you can't focus in on one specific thing, that's when you gotta start clearing things out kind of systematically one thing at a time because that causes chaos in your life. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, which you may have gotten some inklings on, is implied reality. What is implied reality? And I will touch on this more in a different video. Um, and so your implied reality is what you're doing. Okay, so say you're, you're working on having this abundance consciousness and you think you're saying the right things and doing the right things, but yet there's still some maybe behaviors or something that are indicating that you're still in lack. One, very obvious, hoarding. 
people who, I'm not saying saving money is bad, but people who put the consciousness around, I'm going to save money, build up money, because I need it for a rainy day, cancel, 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 that I said that. Um, you would want to look at your money as being saved for for fun, for when you want it, not for a rainy day or a tragedy. So those are some of the things. Um, like I'll tell you, one of the things now, and I've talked about this example before, when my kids were younger, you know, the main way of listening to music and things was on CD. So they would frequently want to buy one CD and make copies for their friends. You know, they think they're being economical, saving money. Well, no, that's poverty consciousness. And so, I mean, they were teenagers, they weren't working on abundance, but had they been, that would have just diminished everything they just did. Um, so you're getting all these things come up, or you should be if you're, if you're following along with the program. And then the next thing I'd ask you to do is to take it one step further. Say you're recognizing where you had have some poverty consciousness or lack consciousness. You're going to want to ask yourself, why do I think that way? What was it that led me to this conclusion that life has to be hard or finances are a struggle? And what you're typically going to find is something way back, um, you know, usually in your childhood. Like if your parents had um, housing instability or food instability, that kind of thing. That is going to affect you now, even if you do not have those issues in this lifetime. If you have not cleared them, it can still cause problems. Um, it, and it doesn't even have to be where... It was an everyday, all the time thing. I worked with people who's maybe one of their parents lost a job and they had to downsize into a smaller house and stuff. And it just happened once. And they're still affected by it because they just haven't worked on the issues. So another thing that I have seen very commonly in this community and the people I work with was we all know we need to take certain precautions and protections if we're going to do this kind of work. Well, I have had some people who in their attempting to do this kind of work, they will say a prayer of protection. And I've heard people calling in like 15 different angels and guides in this. That's way overkill. And what that actually is, is you're saying, I don't believe in this. I don't feel secure in this. I need all these other beings to come into my reality to help me and help me keep protected. No, these angels, guides stand at your side. They're there to assist. You're to connect with your higher self and bring the energy through. Not bypass that and go ask a guide. Um, it just doesn't work that way. And to put all these guides and all this protection into place, what you're really saying is, I am not safe and I am not protected and that's what I'm gonna get. It's the difference in actually knowing and believing and just like reading something in a book and being familiar with it. That's what the difference is. Okay, and I've got my notes. So, um, next thing I wanna ask is, did anything come up about your physical body? And I just want to give a disclaimer here. This is not medical advice. But some of the things you might have gotten or wondered about, like um, you've seen people, and it might be this for yourself, where you've got one shoulder lower, one ear lobe higher, something like that. Your shoulders are off balance. Well, that what that usually signifies is that you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. People who are hunched back like that, that's usually what we find out. Or one short shoulder lower, um, you could have the feminine side of your body or the masculine side of your body. Um, you know, you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulder, that's the masculine side. That would be something that's not healed and around masculine energy, that kind of thing. Um, 
people who have hearing loss, usually because of a painful situation they don't want to deal with, they become very stubborn and they won't listen. They shut off their hearing. If they do that long term over time, eventually it will result, can result, I shouldn't say will, can result in hearing loss. Um, low back pain. Usually your pelvis is off balance. That's because you have not dealt with the emotional trauma. If you had something like hypertension, that signifies you're in resistance to healing. So, as these things come up, don't dwell on them. Ask for the solution and it will be brought to you. Um, when you have a, um, and I'll talk about this more in other, when we get to other sections, but any anything that you talk about that's a problem or a discomfort or whatever, you always, if you're going to talk about it, you always want to add that solution to it. Um, you know, I'm having all this emotional trauma and I know I'm clearing it out of, of my family's Akashic records so that we don't have to carry this any further, that kind of thing. So what I'll tell you is, you know, this was back when I was in, oh, maybe my late forties, early fifties. Um, I, before, okay, I gotta go back. Before I even knew there were any um, muscular or skeletal problems with me, I had met Jay and he was a myofascial release practitioner. So I had a lot of um, energy work and healing work done through him until he moved away. Then it was years and years because I didn't know anybody else who did this kind of work and I didn't know where to find it. Well. What ended up happening was, so Jay was brought into my reality before I even knew that was a need. So that's one thing that'll happen. Spirit provides for you before you even know it's needed. So that happened. But then after all this time went by, and I'm probably in my late 40s, early 50s, where I'm realizing, well, I had actually hurt my back. And I was realizing that there was actually a problem. So I started going to a chiropractor. I got some physical therapy, but physical therapy and insurance, um, insurance will dictate to physical therapy how long they can see the person. And they don't give you, from my experience, the amount of time you're necessarily gonna, gonna need. They go by a standard. Okay, this should be taken care of in six visits. Well, maybe not realizing that the person's been carrying this all their life, this imbalance, and it's going to take more than six. So you have the choice of paying out of pocket. Well, physical therapy sessions are very expensive, and I just did not have the funds at the time. So next thing that happened, I was led to... Um, a center that had um, massage therapists there that were trained in the myofascial release just like Jay was. So I started going there and that is a lot more economical than to see a physical therapist. So and I could go whenever I wanted I just had to pay for it but I could afford to pay for that as opposed to the physical therapy. Um, because you know, if you're going to a physical therapist, they're working at a clinic, they've got higher ups. I mean, you're being charged a higher rate um, than if you just go to a massage therapist. And their training is different too, you know. So there would be times where you would actually need the physical therapy, times where you could do it with the massage therapy. But so then, you know, with all that happening, I still was going to need more care. Well, because I was in alignment and in with the synchronization, the training for the myofascial release actually came to the city that I live in um, at a hotel. So I was able to take that training and then I work on myself. So, um, you know, the universe, whether you have the finances to do what you need to accomplish your goals, the universe is going to take care of you and bring you another option if 
what you think is going to work out just can't work out like like it did for me with the physical therapy. So the other thing um, I'll just mention briefly here because when they're working on the fascia, they're releasing emotional blocks. Clear difference between a massage therapist and a physical therapist. Um, I would go with the massage and skip the physical therapy for this because the massage therapists, they do all kinds of body work and usually they're pretty intuitive. And they actually know their spiritual stuff, if they're a spiritual person. The physical therapists I worked with, you could tell it was a little different. They were trained from a book and they didn't really have the knowledge base. So they'd say these things and... You know, I would engage in the conversation with them. They couldn't follow along because they did, had no clue. Um, they had learned it in a book. It was from memory. It wasn't from personal experience or knowledge. So in my, ex I, and of course there could be some physical therapists, but in my experience, I didn't find any that were um, that intuitive. But from my personal opinion, um, the massage part is m more effective. It was more effective for me and I think for a lot of people. So our body, last thing I want to say, our physical body, our soul is the blueprint for our physical body. So it's the blueprint to which physical matter attaches. So when, okay, so when your body's out of balance, the soul coming in to occupy that space has trouble occupying that space. And that's why we are combining the physical work with the spiritual work. Okay, so that being covered, I've got to find my next uh, part I wanted to talk about here. You know, I always make notes. I just do better. Um... Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is, so the first time we talked more about the root chakra and the thing in the physical world. Our chakras work together to the number eight. So our physical level is our first chakra in the body, considered the first. It works together with our crown, which is number seven. Our crown is where we connect to source. And so... Anytime um, anything is going on in your physical world, usually the result of a disconnection from source. And how, you're not completely disconnected, but like I always tell people, it's like a drain that's clogged. Only some of the energy is going to go through. And so you've got, um, you take in insight and ideas from source in through your crown. That energy comes down into your body, depending on the degree your heart is open, is what how much insight you will actually get and be let through because your heart is the gateway between the spiritual world and the physical world. That's why I always talk about forgiveness, taking your power back. So we're going to do... Oh, I got to go back. So some of the things... That, I got ahead of myself, sorry. Some of the things that can cause us to diminish that energy flow from our crown, unhealed result, unhealed issues with an authority figure, be it a parent, be it a church person, be it police, be it a teacher, any of a boss, any of those authority type figures, they're self-appointed authority, by the way. Nobody has authority over you except for yourself. So it could be an issue with this self appointed self-imposed authority people that were in your life it could be victim consciousness belief and lack unworthiness guilt shame those are the main things that are going to close off your crown if like some people who are raised in the, uh, like a really strict religion um you know punishing um that kind of thing they don't do in my opinion from the ones i've worked with they don't do as well they um, they just disconnect. They they mistake source 
for the human authority figures that have caused problems. Like a child, like for me, it was a very cruel father. And then being raised in a religion that taught me God was our father, I naturally assumed that because my, my father was cruel and abusive, that all men were like that and that God would be like that as well. So those are the kinds of things that can close off your crown. So what you do, you, you know, we're going to, you open your crown, you ask for these things and you're going to imagine and that we're going to do a meditation and we're going to do this in the meditation. But you imagine bringing these things in through your crown into your physical reality and just kind of daydream them into existence. And so we'll do a meditation where you're guided to do that and, and we're using the tones. And that's going to help bring this into your reality um, because when I use the tones, it raises the frequency, which helps you raise your frequency to, because your frequency has got to match the vibration of what you're trying, what you're bringing into your reality. So the tones will help, help with that. So the another point I want to touch on before I do the meditation and I'm going to stop this video and start a new one because sometimes the sound gets a little too much and there's feedback and I have to re-record and I don't want to do both videos. So, but so you've asked for all these things to happen. Then you start watching the synchronicities and watching things that are brought into your reality because that is what is going to show you and taking physical action in the physical realm, writing things down. Um, so, I'm gonna pause here and look at my notes, if I can find the pause button. So the last thing I wanna talk about is as you're doing this work, the things you're getting triggered by or that you're thinking about all the time are the things that are causing the issues. So really pay attention to that and ask what the solution is, following the synchronicities and staying grounded. Because if you're gonna try to do any kind of spiritual work and you're not grounded, um, you can actually get sick and you're not going to get an accurate information if you're not grounded. Um, it can't be all airy fairy and love of light, love and light, because it just doesn't work that way. And so sometimes when people start doing this work and say they're trying to manifest a new relationship and they go out and meet someone and within a few hours they determine, okay, this person is a narcissist. If they've done their work, they're going to recognize those red flags and end it right away. You're going to know by what you're attracting into your reality. So sometimes the universe, that's going to tell you you're not quite done, but you're on your way. But the universe brought you this person so that you could, um, you could check, is this an alignment? Is this what I want? And you can say no and reject it. And then the universe knows, okay, you're done with that. Bring you another possibility usually a higher possibility. So when those old things still show up, it just signifies you have a little more work or they always say we get tested. And I think that's what they mean. It's just that you have had this, or I, anybody have had this ideology in our field for so long, it's going to take a little while and a little consistency in your thought processes and those types of things before you can actually switch it. So sometimes it happens in steps. So that relationship comes in, you see the red flags, you end it. Then the next relationship that comes your way will not have those red flags. That's how that works. 
So I hope this all makes sense. I'm going to end this video now and I will be back in a few minutes with the meditation portion of the video. I love you all and have a blessed day. And again, my website is www.embody-light.com. Bye-bye.